liquid. Um, FPI Solar is um, a small um, energy upgrade company now, um, operating from Monegal. And um, it is interesting that at the time serve came about, um, we were just doing solar. So I suppose for me, the main um, impetus in 08 when CERV came along was it allowed um, some diversification uh, in that there was a, a, a large range of measures now going to be significantly grant aided um, in the, a small region uh, to a relatively small pool of contractors. Um, so it made sense to get involved. So, um, basically, um, uh, for me, what CERV meant to me was an increase in business, the nuts and bolts, uh, new learning opportunities, uh, an expanded product network, and kind of an extended uh, network uh, for myself. Um, basically, phase one of CERV predated any of the SEI schemes, so there was an opportunity that was only available to homeowners, homeowners in a compact local region. Um, the homeowners that engaged in the process uh, tended to have a high regard and trust for the scheme um, and there was plenty of referral business. Uh, so there was a kind of a, an energy framework that people became involved in. Um, when we were dealing with people, um, sorry, up to September 2008, um, our only business had been solar, uh, whereas serve supported measures accounted for. Um, when serve kicked off for me, um, in the first quarter it kicked off, 33% uh, of what I did that quarter was serve related. Um, it never dropped below that. Uh, the next year, 2009, uh, it was around 34%, and the next year um, it was 41%. Um, so basically there was a significant financial gain. Um, so that was that part of it. Um, it was this also the start of a long journey for some clients in that I found I had gone in there maybe to do attic insulation, wall insulation, heating controls, but um, have gone back to several houses in the last couple of years uh, for stuff like uh, maybe solar hot water or stove installation. So there's a good bit of buy-in in a, a small area. And um, the previous speaker, Vincent, or sorry, two speakers ago, referred to um, you know, almost some people in the market claiming that black was white. Um, and sometimes you're up against that um, in that what somebody will install is often the wrong solution, often badly installed, often overpriced. So people had a framework to kind of engage in. If um, Paul Kenny or somebody else from Serve, they got buy-in from um, at a public meeting, well, suddenly they knew the kind of the right questions they should be asking. Why is the attic insulation from this guy costing more than from this guy? Oh, this guy is putting in a storage platform. He's also putting in ventilation. So it was before SEI does it a little bit now with um, their scheme, but it was kind of the first regulated environment for contractors to, to work in. Um, the learning opportunities I have just written down here, there were many and they came quickly. Um, around that time, heating controls was basically a thermostatic radiator valve and attic insulation was something that a builder put up there to make it difficult for you to put your Christmas tree there. There was um, not a lot of kind of understanding. Um, the main motivation of people attending the public meetings, I'm sure, was to find out how to get something for nothing but they couldn't have left without learning something. And that there was um, a kind of a, a good number of regularly held kind of road shows. I used to call them the Seamus and Paul uh, shows. Um, and uh, we'd go in and as contractors listen to the same thing again and again and again about why a stove is better than a, uh, an open fireplace, why attic insulation should be there, how thick it should be. So people, some of it was bound to stick, and I think it had to have stuck. So the constant kind of repetition. Um, um, yeah, um, the importance of learning opportunities for contractors as well um, couldn't be ignored. I remember in 2000, early 2008 getting a call from one Mr. Kenny who had crawled about in an attic on his belly for about a half an hour, and he basically had issues. So I took this call and basically there were holes in my argument, but there was also holes in the insulation. So um, it was one of the most difficult attics I had ever been in my life. And maybe something clicked with me that day. Not that we had ever set out deliberately to take a shortcut, 
but uh, you learned at the very beginning that resistance was futile. Um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, you, uh, there just wasn't any point. So the lesson learned, you know, that you signed up to a spec, you had to deliver the spec. Um, that was kind of just to be all and the end all of it. Um, so it's an awful pity um, that my slides aren't here because it actually ends with a, a photograph of a light on outside the same Paul Kenny's door in the middle of the day. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but you'll, 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 ju you'll just have to take my word for it. It exists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, um, the, the, scheme, the scheme, I will indeed, the scheme also had learning opportunities for suppliers uh, in that I used to be going into um, heat merchants and other stores looking for these exotic components like an automatic bypass valve or a remote acting fire valve and you, you were kind of immediately sent to the guy who dealt with weird clients. Uh, whereas now in Nina, I suppose thanks to the SEI scheme as well, but it is possible to buy what the building regulations specify. And um, that certainly can't be frowned on, and, and that if the stuff is on the shelf and someone else goes in to look for it, maybe the guy, even for the wrong reasons, will say, would you like one of these? Um, so hopefully, the, uh, basically, retailers, uh, building suppliers are becoming more updated and giving people the right stuff. Mind you, if you go into Sheehan's or Shadwick's and look for an uninsulated copper cylinder, I'm sure it's still possible to buy them. Why? I don't know. Um, other than you want to make a bucket out of them or something, or um, one of those fancy log baskets or something. Um, so basically, uh, just to, to sum up, the, the, the benefits were financial um, and they were learning. Uh, learning is very kind of vague in that it was, no, I don't mean vague, but it is very broad. It's both learning for me as a contractor, learning for the public. And I think the, the future um, kind of legacy of the, of the project will probably be that. It will be probably people who did things for the right reason um, at the right time. And um, basically, they understand why they did them. Uh, they understand that there were kind of the right things to do. And hopefully, um, they'll continue to educate people. So. Um, that's it, folks. Would I take part in a similar um, kind of uh, initiative again? Of course I would. And um, also, for myself, I think the engagement hopefully will be ongoing uh, in that, uh, in the meantime, uh, there have been many kind of sessions and seminars organized on things from maybe tools to evaluate renewable resources. Uh, there's a, a package red screen, for example, that I would have done a module on. Um, I had a very good day down in Gorteen Agricultural College on biomass. So there's kind of um, a framework which came about, and I must say my involvement in the project has only been positive. Um, so with that, I will conclude. And thank you.